Messaging is a powerful architectural pattern for communicating between systems. This does not necessarily mean microservices. You can leverage messaging even when using a monolith to make it loosely coupled. Let's see how this would work within a monolith. Hey everybody, it's Derek Kamartin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So this video is kind of continuing my series here about discussing a loosely coupled monolith, specifically for messaging. And I've used this slide in previous um, videos. I'll have a link to description to the primary one. But the idea being, again, that we have two top level processes and I'll kind of give you a flow of how this would actually work. Is if we have a HTTP request that comes in to our ASP.NET Core project and that request ultimately gets routed to one of our boundaries, one of the initial blue boxes, and there's an implementation that does something. Let's say it's actually something like creating an order. It does, it persists um, some order in our database. And there from what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna create a message and publish that message to a message broker. Now this is where the second piece of the puzzle, the top level, is the message processor. This is a completely separate uh, process, executable that's running, that it's picking up the messages from the message broker and then distributing those messages to the other relevant boundaries that need to do something with that particular message. So in this case, there's a completely different context, a completely different boundary that's gonna get and execute and handle that particular message. So let's jump into some code and actually kind of provide in a real solution with C-sharp projects, how that actually looks. So the first thing I actually need is a library that's gonna actually interact with the message broker and kind of invoke our code that we actually uh, wanna handle the particular messages. There's a variety of different libraries that do this. You may be familiar, have heard about end service bus. There's brighter, rebus, just eat has a library called just saying, which is, sits on top of AWS, SNS and uh, SQS. And there's gonna be a library I'm gonna use that I discovered a couple months ago called CAP, and I'm gonna use RabbitMQ with that. So it doesn't matter what library you're using, for demo purposes, I'm just using CAP. So I've added the relevant NuGet packages to my ASP.NET Core project, and I'm just gonna quickly configure it. So I'm gonna add CAP. And I'm using an in-memory storage provider, but this could be SQL Server or MySQL. Um, there's different providers. I'm also gonna use RabbitMQ, and I just have this running in Docker right now. And then there's a UI dashboard just to kind of provide some visuals that I'll illustrate with. And then the important piece here is the consumer thread count, I'm gonna make zero. Now this is important because I'm in the ASP.NET Core project. I'm not actually gonna process any messages in ASP.NET Core, it's just gonna be for publishing. Our worker is gonna be doing all the processing. So the last thing here is just to add the dashboard just so we can get some visuals. So that's step one is adding it to our ASP.NET Core project. All right, so now I'm just gonna basically copy and paste this and add it to our worker, which is gonna be our message processor. So I don't need the dashboard and our consumer thread count, I'm gonna get rid of zero and leave it as the default, which is probably just a few. But again, I'm using the in-memory storage and RabbitMQ. So jumping back to this visual here, if I think about ESP.NET Core and something occurring, a user making a request that does something like, well, let's say creates an order, there's gonna be an event, a message that we're gonna to publish to the message broker. In this case, let's call this that it's an order placed. So let's implement this, a publishing our message to cap called order placed. So if I jump to Rider again, I have my sales contracts folder. And as I've referenced in other videos, this contracts folder is for basically messages, DTOs, interfaces, and delegates. So I'm going to create a order placed class, and this is gonna represent our event. And for simplicity's sake here, let's just give it a quid of an order ID. Let's just make it simple for now. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to my sales implementation and I have this existing uh, endpoint that I've mapped a post call to, to sales orders. And I said, your order has been placed. Obviously here would be our actual implementation or wherever we want to delegate this to, but we want to at this point publish an event that an order has been placed. So what we can do here is if I take our context, we now have access to uh, the 
cap publisher. So I could call get service and it's the iCut publisher. Got our correct using statement here. All right. And then what we can do is publisher dot publish async at our await. So our first argument with cap is going to be the name. So I'm just actually going to give this the name of the um, uh, class itself. So I'm going to do name of order placed. And then this is going to be our actual object that we're creating of order placed. And we're going to give it an order ID. Let's just give it a new GUID. All right, so we've got our publisher and we're publishing our order placed message. Ultimately, what we wanna do with this now is have this received by the shipping uh, boundary. So we're not gonna be directly communicating from sales to shipping. That's what we're using this async messaging for. We're gonna be publishing a message to a message broker and having our shipping basically deal with that message or whatever it needs to do with it. So if we look over at the shipping's kind of boundary here. Again, shipping can reference the shipping contracts. It's not gonna reference the implementation, but it can reference this contracts project so we can ultimately have a reference to this order placed. So what I'm gonna do in shipping, let's create a new class called, um, let's say it create shipping label. So when an order is placed, our shipping department actually needs to create a shipping label. So what I'm gonna do here is it's gonna implement an ICAP subscribe. So this is how you can basically subscribe to messages. And then we'll just carry a constructor. I'm gonna add a iLogger just so we can print this out on the screen. Make it a little bit easier to look at here to kind of demo. And then I'm gonna create a handle method. And this is gonna take our order placed event and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an attribute, which this is, again, cap specific, but it's going to be a cap subscribe. And the name of this is going to be the name of the message that we we're looking for. When I was publishing this message here, I was giving it the name of order place. So again, this is kind of just like a key. So I'm just going to use the same thing saying when this message is broadcast, is published to the message broker. This is how we actually want to handle it. Basically, we're going to subscribe to that particular message. So here, what I'm going to do is let's just log information and let's say uh, order, order placed, order ID has been placed, has created a shipping label. Now, what I also need to do is register this class with our DI. So I'm going to go into the configure services that we've defined in our shipping, and I'm gonna to add to our service collection, let's add a transient of our create shipping label. So that way, CAP, when it wants, when it needs to actually create that create shipping label class, it can do so through DI. So now that we have everything wired up, what's gonna happen here is ASP.NET Core is gonna get an HTTP request which is going to in line, in process, make a call to the sales boundary here to this particular endpoint, at which point we're gonna publish a message using CAP. We're gonna uh, publish an event called order placed. Ultimately, CAP is gonna push this to RabbitMQ. What's gonna happen from there is our worker process, a completely different executable running, is gonna pick up that message from RabbitMQ and then invoke the create shipping label in our shipping boundary. So it's gonna create this particular class and then call our handle method. And then we'll see our log message here. So let's give this a run. So we can look at ASP.NET Core and we can see that CAP started and we're listening. And we look at our worker, we also have CAP started. So I'm gonna open Postman and I'm gonna make a post call to our sales order, which we had our route there. So it says an order has been placed. If I jump back to the worker, we can see that order, just this log, uh, the label's been created, has created a shipping label. 
So we published the event from our ASP.NET Core project and had our worker project pick up and execute that. Messaging isn't just for microservices. You can use async messaging even within a monolith to create some loose coupling. In my example, I have two distinct boundaries of shipping and sales. The reference, not each other's implementation, but rather just a contracts project, which contains things like our events. They also will contain things, as I mentioned, like interfaces and delegates, but that gets more into a video uh, that I'll produce later related to more thinner events versus fat events and what type of information you actually want to contain uh, in, in your events that you're publishing. If you have any questions or feedback, let me know in the comments. I've had some great discussions and questions in prior videos that are related to this series that I really appreciate. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.